I'm Jim Garrity of National Review, and I'm joined by Ambassador John Bolton, who you know from Fox News, the Bush administration, and many other successful endeavors. Um, Ambassador Bolton, you probably spend more time thinking about foreign policy threats and dangers around the world and American national security as much as anyone. Obviously, Ukraine's in the news, but what's keeping you up these days? I want to know what worries you as the guy who stays on top of this more than anybody else. Well, I think the most immediate threat remains Iran's nuclear weapons program. The deal that the Obama administration and the other Security Council permanent members made with Iran in November in Geneva uh, is a debacle for anybody who cares about stopping nuclear proliferation. Uh, Iran made only very superficial, easily reversible concessions uh, on the nuclear program, but in exchange they got what they wanted most, which was relief from the economic sanctions. Uh, their economy is beginning to recover, not just from the sanctions, but from 30 years of mismanaged economic policy. The Europeans are filling planes going to Iran. Uh, so, and I think it's going to be very hard to reimpose sanctions when it becomes clear Iran's not going to dismantle its nuclear program. So it's a threat not just of Iran with a nuclear capability, but others in the region who will get it if Iran gets it. Okay. Iran kind of receded from the headlines as a situation in Crimea and the Ukraine has dominated that. Uh, a lot of kind of like cacophonious noise coming out of Congress right now, lots of different ideas. What should the U.S. be doing in response to Putin's actions in Crimea? Well, our options, frankly, are limited because this is a failure uh, not just that occurred last week, but that's been going on for five years. The Europeans in 2008 rejected the Bush administration proposal to bring both Ukraine and Georgia into NATO. Uh, four months later, Russia invaded Georgia. You can't miss that connection. And their interference in Ukraine has been going on for a long time. They saw in Barack Obama somebody who was very weak on the attack on Georgia, who's been weak on Syria, weak on Iran. I could go on at great length. Uh, they knew this was the time to take advantage of that weakness and your corresponding European weakness. What I would do would be to go back to where we were in 2008 and say the only way to stability and security for Ukraine uh, and Georgia is to put them on a path to NATO membership. Now, I don't expect Obama will do that, and that's why the lesson of Ukraine is bad, not just there, but for all the other republics of the former Soviet Union, and really worldwide. They see a weak president being manipulated by Putin. They get the lesson, and I'm worried that in the next three years, we'll see others trying to apply that lesson. Yeah. Um, as you look at the Obama foreign policy team, Secretary of State John Kerry, Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel, Susan Rice. Uh, for those on the right, those who might think of themselves as the hawkish persuasion, is there anybody even halfway decent in that in that crowd? Is there anybody who could say as well in that voice, in that group? This is the voice we're most likely to have uh, agreement with and see representing our viewpoints. I, I don't think there's really anybody at the top level, and I don't think when Hillary Clinton was there, she was a voice uh, of reason at the top level either. Th this th the, what they reflect is a view of the world that says America has been too strong historically. Our assertiveness is part of the problem, and therefore, in their view, international security is enhanced by a withdrawing, declining, less powerful America. Uh, I think that's like looking through the wrong end of the telescope, but that's what they think, and I think they are essentially united in that worldview. Uh, finally, one last world trouble spot that always seems to get my attention. It doesn't always dominate the headlines. Um, a lot of saber rattling in the Pacific between China and Japan over a bunch of islands most people have never heard of, um, but apparently a big deal of national pride to both of those countries. How worried are you about that, and is there an American role in trying to mitigate these tensions, or is this something where we just have to watch from afar and hope for the best? I think it's a very dangerous situation, and I would say if you had to pick one country in the world that's watching how the United States deals with Russia over Ukraine, it's China. Precisely because of those very assertive, almost belligerent territorial claims they make in the East China Sea and the South China Sea. And uh, it, they, they are over uh, reefs and rocks and tiny islands, but what's significant is whether China can turn what are now international waters into Chinese territorial waters, giving them control over sea lines of communication, trade that are vital for Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and others. Uh, this has huge international significance, uh, and it's significance not just over there, but for us, because our trade with all these countries depends on those waters and depends on their economic viability. This is a paradigm example of 
how what happens in the rest of the world can have a direct and palpable impact on the lives of everyday Americans here at home. And you don't hear the president mention it at all. Yeah. And finally, a closing question. Let's assume it's January 2017 and things have gone well. Republicans have retaken the Senate, control the House, and there's a Republican administration in Washington. What's your dream job in that circumstance? <laughs> well, I haven't decided on whether I'm going to run for president oh, myself in so. 2016, right. so we'll, we'll, let, we'll let that uh, abide the event. I just think it's very important when we come to the 2014 House and Senate elections uh, to help get candidates elected who believe in, who understand the importance of a strong American national security policy. That's why I formed the John Bolton PAC and the Super PAC to assist such candidates. I think it's important for Republicans to keep the majority in the House and get a majority in the Senate. But within those majorities, we need many more members of Congress who understand and support strong American national security. Ambassador Bolton, thanks very much Thank for joining you, us. Thank you.